Hi there, welcome to my channel. I am about to run through how to set up server-side rendered offset-based pagination on Next.js. And this is if you want to create a list of public listing cards like a shop, this is probably the best way to do it because it's all on the server, all the pagination. So yeah, this is how it looks. Set up a pretty basic grid of listings. As you can see, we're on page one and we're using the URL search parameters to navigate through the pages. Each page is a link, so search engines will pick them up. And this is highly optimized for um, SEO and it's all on the server. So you can see it's instant loading. So let's get into it. I have created a template project using create next app. To do that, you would simply run MPX create next app latest, but I've already done that. I've gone ahead and set up quite a few other things. I'm using bun to install all node modules because it's extremely fast. Do bun install. You can see what node modules we've got here. There's quite a few. So bun install, let's see how long that takes. 595 milliseconds. So pretty quick compared to NPM and um, yarn. So I would definitely suggest using that. Let's first start off with what I've installed in addition to the Create Next App defaults. So create Next App installs TypeScript at ESLint by default. You can choose whether or not you want to use TypeScript or, or JavaScript. Gone ahead and installed Prisma. Set up a database I'm accessing locally. Database is called Offset SSR. This is my environment variable. Now, neat little way to create a database quickly is just this create db and you can put any dash db and it will just create your database directly on your local environment. You'll need to have PSQL installed for that. Really quick way of creating a database. Okay, so let's continue. We have installed Prisma. We've got our Next.js app. We're actually loading our environment variables through T3 OSS EMV Next.js. This is by Theo or T3 app, the developers of the T3 app. It's really handy, to be honest. It gives you kind of type safety with your environment variables. So all your server environment variables go in here, all your client in here, and then combined go into here. And then you can actually access them easily just using this env variable throughout your app. And you have full type safety. Okay, so what we do here is we import that into our MJS next config. We've got in our domains URL for, for loading images. We've got server actions enabled, typed routes enabled. These are experimental. And this is our TS config, TS config ESLint, our Tailwind config, and our Prettier. So as you can see, I have already created some basic elements like button, input, link, footer, header, sidebar. And so if we just cross this out, load this up on port. 3000. Okay, there we go. There's our layout. Obviously, uh, that's now called X, but we've got a Twitter icon for now. Just some basic stuff. We want to start by creating a feed component. So now Next.js's app router has a page and a layout. And if you're familiar with it, the layout is what wraps the page effectively in, in the directory that we're in. We're not going to create any additional pages. The way this works is we've got the children, which is essentially the page, so this, and the layout is the global layout because it's in the app directory. And as you can see, we've got HTML and body there. We have the sidebar in here, and then we've got our main content. Also good for SEO because the main essentially tells search engines, this is the content that might change. The rest of it is more or less always going to stay the same. And then we've got our type for page props, which is uh, the default page props if I console log this. You can see we have params and search params in the console, meaning this is being server rendered. And that's the, the parameters you get back from uh, the page. So next step is to create a feed. And I'm gonna do that by creating a new component called feed.tsx. And I'm going to just create this. So now if I bring the feed into here, there we go, we've got our feed. I'm going to start by creating a server action. I'm going to create const fetch feed equals 
and I'm going to use server in here. So this basically says this is a server action. Now kind of what we're wanting to do is pass in the take and we want to also pass in the skip. So I'm going to put results equals Prisma. Just realized we actually need to seed the database and I've created this um, simple seed command for seeding the Prisma database. And so I'm going to run this. What this does is it creates a user, John it example.com it just uh, creates about 50 listings there and if you look at our prisma schema that's that's our schema and so we're effectively going to create these listings and these images so we can pull them from the database so let's do that p prisma db seed that actually uses a seed command that is in our package json this one here and it's executed so pdev Right, now we can do prisma.listings.findMany or oh, prisma.listing.findMany and then we want to take skip and we want to order by price price ascending so you'll note that in the seed file we actually incremented the price by 100 um, on each iteration of the loop so we want to just show that in the results on the feed now we need the total so prisma.listing.count oh forgot one of these data results and we also need to return some metadata which is has next page and we do this by we skip plus take equal minus total there we go and we also want to return the total pages math.seal total divided by take great ah need to await these of course no, no promises. And let's just type this as well. So type uh, fetch feed return type equals type of fetch feed type. Then export that. Great. So we've got this server action that we've created. And uh, now we can get into actually listing them. So let's start by now creating a card. So a listing card. So I'm going to new file card.tsx. R-A-F-C. Cool. Listing card. And that way we can do this. Array dot from length ten dot map uh, nothing and then index and we can return card with a key ideal. Cool, so we've got our feed, so we're going to add it to our page here, which we've done. Um, and we can actually pass these props down. Obviously it isn't accepting those yet, but props. Um, page props. Okay, great. Let's have a look. Refresh. Cool, we've got our listing card. Great, do this one, class name equals space, y12, and then I am going to div this, cool, it's got a grid now, perfect. Now we need to just work on the listing card UI, which I created before, and I'm going to rename 
this to listing card. So R F C R A F C listing card. So we've got listing cards there. Got our card UI. So now we actually want to change this to listing card. Excellent. So we've still got our listing cards there. Perfect. UI that I just created. So the props that we want to take in are the listing. And we could just put a type definition here. Because ultimately, uh, these are the fields that we want to show on our listing cards. So let's just const get rid of all these and um, equal props perfect get rid of that don't need that don't need seller id don't need end date we just need title description image and price here is the wrapper component for the card here is the image cool so let's just first of all actually get this data from the server action. Now, how will we do that? Well, basically, it's as simple as this. Const data equals fetch feed. Um, and we need to also make this asynchronous. We can do this because it is a uh, server component, which we can mark it as view server. Get rid of the card. And uh, we have our data here. So we can actually just pass in that data because effectively that data is the same structure as a listing. Um, let's have a look. Do we get that return back data? No, but effectively it is a listing because we do listing, you'll find many, and we get an array of listings. So, so we can actually do this now data dot map and we can pass in a single listing into here let's have a look listing has type any data does not exist on promise that is because I didn't away this Boom, there we go. We've got our data being passed in. So let's continue with building the card. Shall we take a look at where we're at? Ah, nice. Card content here. Um, we have a format currency utility. It is just a Intel number format, simple JavaScript. There's more info about it here. And that just formats our currency. I'm in the UK, so it is going to format it into the UK currency. But in the card footer, we have a call to action, and there we go. So now we have our listings, which is great. But we do not have a way of paginating over them at the moment. So I'm going to create a pagination component. Pagination.tsx. And... Same as usual. Great. We've got our pagination component. So we now need to bring in our pagination. And as you can see, it's there at the bottom. I would now like to uh, build this pagination component out. Props. Pagination props. Type pagination props equals. And so we're going to pass in the page, total pages, and has next page. And let's just destructure that. We can set a default value of one. So we're always on page one by default. And then let's just bring this in. All right, there we go our pagination component. Currently, there's no pages because we're not passing in any data. In fact, let me just turn this dark mode off. 
dark mode class. Nice, much better. Um, so we'll need to actually give this pagination a better text color. Yeah, nice. All right, so what do we need to pass in? Well, we need a page, total pages, and a has next page. So the way that we're linking through pages, as I said before, um, at the start of the video, we are doing page equals one. We can actually get this on the server side and use it uh, to map through all the pages. So that is where these props come in, page props. We've got the search params in here and we can just basically destructure that. So if I do console.log props.search params, you'll see page one. If I change that, page two. Nice, that's on the server. Okay, so if we can pass in the props.search params, as well as we want to pass in. So first of all, we need to actually get the metadata out of here as well. Map proof of that. Great. And if we console.log these, You'll see we've got all the listings and then the metadata, we've got a total of seven pages and a has next page true, which is what we want. So that's all the correct information being passed into the pagination component. Now, the only thing that we don't have, uh, we do have these pages and we can link to each one, but as you can see, we're not actually changing the page. We are changing the query parameter, the URL parameter, but we're not actually getting new data. And that is where this comes in. Revalidate path. We want to revalidate the path on here, and then we want to actually pass in dynamic variables. So we've got page size, our page size is here. So let's just create const page size equals eight. Page size. And we default this to skip. We're defaulting that to page size bait. We get to do search params here. Dot page. So the page number is defaulting to one again. We are taking page size of eight. We are skipping the current page number, which is the page minus one, basically. It gives us the amount of listings we want to skip. And so we pass these in. Pass in the take, pass in the skip. So now we're passing these in to our server action. And these are being created from the page number, which we are getting from the page props, which is the search parameters. And let's have a look. Does it work? Okay, looks like we are on a different page. So if I go page two, page one, look at that. That is instant and there you go that's it fully server-side rendered pagination there's nothing here that is using uh use client there we go cool i hope you enjoyed the video and um give it a thumbs up Feel free to subscribe, check out all the links below. I'm going to post the GitHub repository for this and maybe integrate it into your own project.